You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest options platforms in the world. MyAx is now trading options on the Spikes Volatility Index, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction for confident trading, all for competitive exchange fees. It's time to make a change and give yourself an edge with Spikes. Learn more about Spikes at www.myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for information purposes only and are not intended to provide and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again. For Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo, coming at you hot off the heels of the epic 400th episode, spectacular last week. Still recovering. It was actually a double whammy week last week. We had TWIFO 200 on Thursday, followed immediately by Volviews 400 on Friday. So back to back epic anniversaries. Hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys are enjoying the slew of content that is coming your way. I'm seeing what you guys are up to on the network, and you certainly are mainlining the programming these days. Glad we could have something out for you pretty much every day, and not multiple shows a day these days, to keep you engaged, keep you informed, keep you just occupied at the very least out there. Maybe a little enlightened and or entertained as well. Of course, if you just listen to Vol Views, make sure you grab the whole network. And if you like what you hear on Vol Views on the network, whatever show it might be, make sure you leave a review on your platform of choice so other folks can continue to discover this programming during these trying times. And, of course, keep those questions coming. We do love to hear from you guys. And joining me on the program today, we actually got two, two beaminers, <laughs> two remote contributors to last week's Volviews 400. They were sad that they missed out being in person on the epic 400th episode spectacular, so I allowed them... The benefit of joining us live this week. Episode 401. Not quite as fun as episode 400 to be on, but still pretty fun nonetheless. First off, we got our old friend, the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com by way of Carmen Lion Capital, by way of a sleepy little hamlet known as Maine where he's planning to go fishing right after this show. Mr. Rock Lobster, welcome back to the program, sir. It is, it is good to be back here. And, like, and how I like to say... The 401st show is one better than the 400th. That is the old adage, right? You know, don't spit into the wind. And, of course, 401 is better <laughs> than 400. And also joining us for this 401st episode hoedown, let's say, is the former Mr. Weekly Rundown. Now he's the guy beaming in from EQ Derivatives, a.k.a. Mr. Russell Rhodes, a.k.a. the once and future Dr. Vix. Mr. Rhodes, welcome back to the program to you as well. Okay, my my goal 
First off, I love that I'm uh, on 401, but my goal is I want to be on show 420, and I want to be Dr. Vix by then. Well, there you go. Oh! It's, it's always good to have goals. I'm sure a lot of your students over there will appreciate your appearance on the episode 420 as we keep on rolling right on into Volatility Review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Volatility Review, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is going on. Over there on the volatility side of the fence, the trading, the trending, the unusual activity, the analysis, all that fun stuff, and the options, the futures, the broad volatility space, the ETPs, you name it, we're going to break it down. Maybe you got an exotic vol product you'd like us to take a look at? Hit us up. Let us know. We're here for you at the end of the day. Coming into showtime, again, it's like a broken record, a weird end to another weird week. Pretty much the entirety of the week was feeling the bull, just letting the bull out, letting the bull run. He was really feeling his oats. He was just goring any bear in his path. He said, get the heck out of my way. The bull is here. The bull is in charge. So we pretty much rallied every day and to the point where we were asking, what, what is going on? What is it going to take to maybe have this bull take a breath, take a bit of a breather? And it turns out it was the old White House, Mr. Trump, who could pretty much do the one thing that nothing else it seemed like could do. Not even really the trade war for very long. Not even the pandemic, for, only for about a month. But Mr. Trump comes in, and all of a sudden, the rally yesterday faded, and now today, everyone's waiting the news and the announcements coming out of the White House, hence the market kind of in mixed to down territory today. Come into showtime, we're seeing the Dow off almost two-thirds of a percent, uh, the S&P off about a quarter of a percent, and NASDAQ still up, up about a third of a percent. And our old friends, VIX Cash and Spikes, if you just hadn't known, if you had just fast-forwarded from last week to this week, you would think nothing had happened, because we are almost literally unched. On both of them right now, spikes at about a 30, which puts it pretty much exactly unched from last show. And VIX Cash was at a 29 and a half, and now it's at about 29 and three quarters. Uh, that pretty much puts it unched to down about a quarter. <laughs> so, so pretty much unched on both out there this week. So if you just watch net to net, show to show, you think, eh, not a heck of a lot really going on. In the vol space, our old friend VVIX coming in a wee bit down to about 108 and a half at the start of the show. That puts it down about 11, 11 and a half points from where it was this time last week. Remember, we like to look at that 120 level as kind of that new barometer of whether things are really popping off in VIX land or not. And we're still frothy. We're still over 100. We're still in triple digits, but not quite at that 120 and certainly well shy of that 160 and above levels that we were at. Not too long ago. Let's go back around the horn. Let's start. He's our guest in the Myax hot seat. Let's start with the once and future Dr. Vic. Sir, what is on your radar in this yet another weird end to another weird week, sir? Vix just won't go down. It, it just will not go down, regardless of what's going on. And you got to take that as a signal that this is going to be like, it's not going to be the summer of love. 2020 is going to be the it's going to be one of those summers that they do documentaries about on the History Channel. And one of them is going to be um, possibly the summer crash of 2020. That's a bit extreme, but it really does feel like the volatility uh, VIX is indicating that SPX traders and, and those that like to hedge and be protected are still paying up for protection, even though we keep climbing to new highs. Uh, it, it's the difference between the fear of missing out guys and the double dippers and the double dippers are still buying protection. And I, I they believe they're going to end up uh, making money off of that one way or another. Yeah, you're right. As I mentioned, we are literally unched on the week. So VIX and spikes seem at this point to be incapable <laughs> of drifting much south of that 30 handle. Got a few handles away from it in both of them and they both pretty much came right back to it. Uh, to end the week, of course, a lot of this fear being driven by this uh, continued saber rattling, shall we say, over there between us and China. China, of course, cracking down to Hong Kong. The U.S. administration not exactly liking that. Now China upping the stakes yet again in a bit of a weird twist, threatening separately 
military action to, quote, resolutely smash any move by Taiwan toward declaring independence. So throwing Taiwan there into the mix as well. Maybe a little bit of extra saber rattling coming back from China. They apparently feel like they maybe were made to look a little weak, a little poor as a result of this whole pandemic. So maybe perhaps attempting to regain some face on the international stage by rattling some sabers at Taiwan. Either way, none of it is good. The market not liking it, hence why we're following fuses to go down and why the markets are a little bit skittish coming into today. Mr. Rock Lops, the same question for you. What is lighting up your tape? What is lighting up the tape and what shall forever be known as the pit chat over there with your crazy, sir? Uh, well, lighting up the tape. So I, I, aren't the Chinese sort of diverting everybody's attention from Hong Kong to China, to Taiwan now? Like, OK, we're going to take over Hong Kong, but we're going to divert your attention to Taiwan and try to blame that on the U.S. I guess. Is that better? Threatening an invasion of Taiwan so we don't pay attention to what's going on in Hong Kong. <laughs> like kind of the shell game, you know, like, OK, you know, you're um, the uh, OK, pandemic, Hong Kong, now Taiwan. Like, OK, you know, we're always, they'll, they'll find something. Um, uh, but what Russell said is, OK, we have this 30 and then I'm today I'm like, OK, what's 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 10 day realizable in SPX? Somebody guess. Top of your head. Russell probably knows because that's his job. Longo. Yeah, Russell's probably cheating. He has the he has the data right in front of him. Ten day realized vol. I'm gonna say we're at maybe eighteen. No, I think it's a lot lower than that. And I'm not cheating and I'm not I'm not looking anything up, but I I think it's under ten. No, no, ten days is not under ten. It's okay. nineteen. It's nineteen. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Take right. that. I revoke your Dr. Vix card, sir. Oh my okay. God! I'm not gonna. I, I got to lay off the 420. <laughs> so, so just you know, what I try to like. So in the pit chat, what do we talk about? Um, you know, as a former liquidity provider guy way back when, um, when I was younger and handsomer, um, you know, you liquidity providers have to pay the rent like everybody else, right? And usually that comes in the form of being able to trade gamma, scalp, whatever. You know, there's they they are pretty sensitive to vol and we're trading like sub 20 for the first time since this whole pandemic started um and so that's like we're two and a half months into that now and like with vix still at 29 like that the distance between the future and realized vol is actually as far as it's been since the pandemic started um and um uh vix straddle uh, spike straddle at the money. Those are things are freaking expensive. They're like seven bucks, you know, till June. And we, next week, we only have, uh, after we have two and a half weeks to expiration. So, you know, VIX, Vol VIX, uh, it, I feel it is very freaking pricey for what we have movement wise. And it is a stiff bid for it. So I'm, I am, um, uh, so I'm confused. That's a simple. It's not that I'm confused. It's just the Vols bid. And I still think there is an enormous, you know, the tails on all of this are still so big. Um, I mean, the China thing, I think, is significant, maybe just for this weekend. Um, that's why VIX looks like it might turn red here by the end of the day. But um, I, I, I feel like VIX wants to move freaking big, 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 big um, relative. Maybe six, seven, eight point move between now and June expiration. I know that sounds crazy, but I like, it's almost like somebody's they're already like, okay, the pandemic is over because Florida's doing okay. Or everything's going to go to hell in a handbasket and we're back up to a 40 because the market got way far ahead of itself and we're going to be going down 3% a day again. So I just, even though it's not happening now, I, it's, the market is definitely pricing it like it's going to happen. Um, which I find um, a little odd and funky. Um, so what's going on in the pitch out where basically uh, the idea is, you know, we kind of want to sell the Vega number, um, but buy short-term gamma just in case things blow apart. Um, so that's kind of what's going on in the pitch out as far as structuring a position to get around uh, what I call like a like huge divergence in what's actually how ball is trading and what people are paying for it. Uh, what you will notice, though, is uh, 
vol price for Monday is right around 20%. So that's not, I mean, that definitely, so you have like this really high vol, but a very, um, a, a very uh, contango S curve in the S&P 500. So like it's, I don't know how long that lasts. I guess just what Russell was saying. How, I don't know how long it lasts. Eventually, once the liquidity provider has to start paying the rent, though, that's going to come down. And I don't know if it's just the Trump announcement, if he's saying anything about China or not. But I just I feel like the June cycle is going to be a big, um, uh, like a fairly big, big, big move come out of it. So I'm actually positioned that way. So <laughs> I'm talking my own thing. But um, we'll see what happens. You don't think it should happen, but you're trading like you can. That's uh, that's a sign of a trader out there. <laughs> but, you know, you're right. I, I've joked many times. How many times have I joked on this show? So many. I've lost count. The fact at the end of the day, you know, the vol math is, is pretty basic math. The realized vol doesn't equate to what we're seeing out there. Then, you know, the VIX has to come down. And yet, you're right, we're not seeing that right now, which is probably a sign that there is some other unknown, unknown lurking out there that is being priced in. Because movement-wise, you're right, we're not exactly meriting staying glued to this 30 strike the way we are out there in VIX and Spikes right now. It seems like almost impossible. It's rubber banding. It just sucks it right back to it, uh, which is kind of interesting. Haven't seen that for a little while. Usually we got some movement going on week on week in ball views. We're usually at least a few points away from where we were. And this time glued, glued with strong gorilla glue there <laughs> to the 30 strike in the vol space. Let's see what the futures are up to. Come into showtime. We saw the cash was Right around 29, uh, 60 or so. And we saw the June future had about almost exactly a point worth of premium to that cash. It was about uh, 30, 65 or so, so a little north of a point. And we saw the July future right around 31 and a half, so nearly two points worth of premium out there to July. So not exactly a, a crazy town term structure out there, certainly not compared to what we've seen of late out there. Mr. Rock Lobster, anything surprising you out there? Obviously, you just mentioned the distance between the futures and the realized vol, but anything catching your eye out there from a VIX futures term structure perspective this week? Um, you know, just like a weird, I think it's there's the election thing, which has got the weird bump on it. Um, uh, that's has not gone away. Uh, I will remind everybody, though, that prior to the COVID-19, whatever, um, that bump was there, but everything was 10 points lower. <laughs> so yeah, it stood out. It was much more prominent back before, back before February. Yes. <laughs> um, so I don't know if we get back. Well, we could, you know, um, but it, it certainly could happen. Um, but we're, you know, like I said before, we have a very, uh, we have a contangoous term structure in SPX. So you calculate all the four balls and you get, um, you get contango in the futures at a very high level. Normally what I would say is that makes the vol products like VXX and UVXY, they don't move very much. They're kind of like stuck in this slow decaying mode unless VIX cash really starts to uh, move. So it's like everything is sort of sitting here at really high vol waiting to move. And I, that's what the curve, you know, also keeps those products from moving too much the way it sort of is priced right now. Um, Cause all the decay is, you know, you've got higher, de- you've got decay, but it's on a $30 number now instead of, you know, normally you have decay when VIX is 12 and it just, it just doesn't move the products as much. Um, so it's, again, it's like suspended animation at 30 ball is the best I can describe it. That is a pretty apt description. We are pretty much suspended right here at 30, perhaps playing the wait and see game for the announcement later today or some other shoes to drop out there over the weekend as they are wont to do. These days, but you're right. The the term structure is interesting, and it is there is still that election bump, just a little harder to see. <laughs> There's a little bit of other vol that's been priced in there over the last few months. Not sure if you're aware, listeners. If you're not, go back and check out some of the the archived episodes of Volatility Views. Mister Rhodes, anything jumping out at you from our old friend, the VIX futures term structure this week, sir? Yeah, um, believe it or not, there. Uh, it, it, July seems to be popping up a little bit for the first time, and, and everything's been in a very, very, nar- very narrow range. And that just makes me wonder if somebody thinks uh, we're going to be okay for the next couple of weeks, but uh, by the middle of July, we might uh, be in a little bit of danger, Will Robinson. Uh, so, you know, that just the fact that we've been very, very flat, and now it looks like we got a little bit of a bump to the upside in the middle of the summer. 
Uh, and typically, you expect those bumps to show up in August or September when we go into the fall and everybody's always concerned about the fall. Uh, usually people expect the, the summertime to be very quiet and uneventful, but I, I just see a little something that continues to worry me. And I could say I'm talking my book, but I just went 100% to cash. Uh-oh, the once and future Dr. Rhodes. I, two days ago, I went 100% to cash. Oh, there you go. There's your sentiment indicator for you, listeners. Mr. Rhodes, 100% in cash. But you're right, that's uh that term structure perhaps pricing in that what you call it before, that not summer of love <laughs> here for the market here. That certainly seems like it might be the case. At least look into all things VIX futures. Let's run over to the options side of the fence now. Spikes options. Uh, oh, I pretty similar to what we saw last week. The top position is pretty similar as well. We got the uh, 95s in June leading the tape in spikes options, followed by the July 24s the June 75s, and then the July pars. <laughs> I just love that those are still open, still sitting out there. Someone's holding out hope for the July pars. They got a few months. Hey, Russell's talking about a bit of a bump in July. Maybe maybe we'll see those pars pay off. <laughs> that would certainly be something if that were indeed come to pass and probably a pretty horrible event for the market and for everyone overall. So let's perhaps collectively hope that those July pars are or a hedge against that and not exactly a, a spec against. He's got something else cooking that he wants things to hang out right here. Let's get on out to VIX Options Land. They're kind of hanging out as well today. Volume right around 150,000 contracts as of a few minutes ago. Not a ton. ADV is 350 out there. That's pretty much almost exactly unched from where it was last week. So not a ton of volume lighting up the VIX Options world right now. Let's break down the top 10. It only cost you 89,000 contracts to break into the top 10 in VIX land right now. Listen, that should tell you a little bit of pretty much how light things have been out there. Maybe that'll change with uh, all things considered out here, but it uh, doesn't seem like that's the case. Maybe, we'll see. Maybe today something will be announced soon and we'll see some volume popping off, but... Uh, not right now. Number 10, 89,000. It gets you to the June 40 calls. Number 9, also 89,000 of the July 25 puts. Seems like I'm talking VXX right now, but nope, I'm talking VIX. Uh, number 8, 93,000 of the June 37 halves. Number 7, 94,000 of the June 35s. Number 6, Bucko 5. So it takes us all the way up to number 6 to break into the 100K level. That gets us to the June 30 puts. Number 5, Buck 13. Of the July 28 calls, number four, 117,000 of the June 30 calls, number three, buck 18 of the June 15 puts, and rounding out the top two here, we got a couple of couple of calls, maybe a vertical one up this week, let's see, it's uh, number two, buck 21 of the June 80s, and then number one, a buck 29 of the June 50s, 50, 80 vertical would be an interesting one, but the OI is somewhat reminiscent of each other, so interesting stuff. A total of 6.7 million contracts open here on the week, about 3.6 million on the calls and about 3.1 million on the puts. So if you know anything about VIX, that ain't a heck of a lot. And of course, we are heading into what would usually be a seasonally quiet time out there in all things VIX options. Vol, not exactly blowing the doors off in May heading into June, usually, volume-wise and movement-wise, but... Obviously, we are in somewhat rarefied air right now, so things that usually hold for seasonal cycles of vol, perhaps off the table out here. Like I said, coming into showtime, we had about a buck fifty in terms of contracts on the tape. The big prints out there today in Vixland, ten thousand of the July twenty two puts, then we got seventy three hundred of the June twenty six puts and about seven thousand of the June twenty five puts. And that's really about it. Not a heck of a lot breaking it down out there yesterday. 309,000 contracts on the tape, one of the busier days of the week. And I, I put busier in air quotes there, listeners, because it wasn't a heck of a lot of paper out there. The biggest print was the, July, excuse me, the June 35 calls, 33,000 of those. And then we got the Aug 60s, about 22,000 of those. And the June 75s, about 22,000 of those bad boys. And bring up the rear there, we got about 20,000 of the July 25 puts. Wednesday, not even a quarter of a million contracts on the tape, 224. The biggest prints were the AUG 60s and the AUG 80s. So that does lean into that vertical I was perhaps mentioning earlier, going up 23,000 times in the 60s and 22, almost 23,000 times on the, actually that was June 80s and AUG 60s. So a little bit different out there. Both of those were in June in our in our top 10 positions out there. So maybe someone throwing the June out to August out there. By the way, some interesting stuff out there. 15,000 of the Ock 22 puts and about 15,000 of the July 
22 puts as well. So perhaps getting a little bit of a roll out to Aug, or I should say Ock out there as well. Tuesday was the most active day of the week, but not by a heck of a lot. 334,000 contracts. We saw, again, the June 80s going up 54,000 times. So that 80 strike perhaps holding a little fascination out there for someone out there. Uh, then we got about 30,000 of the June 90s. <laughs> Interesting strike selection going out of here this week on Monday and about 22,000 of the AUG 60s. So yet again, some of these funky strikes rearing their ugly heads. Mr. Rhodes, uh, any interesting VIX paper catching your eye this week? Perhaps even in the weekly, sir, which would necessitate me playing a jingle, sir? Uh, no, nah, nothing in the weeklies, and you got to play it last week. And, I did. Uh, you know, I did. That made your day. It me all it? weekend after you do that. <laughs> uh, no, nah, nothing in the weeklies. Uh, I, I do think about 50,000 of those 80 calls, the ones that were the top uh, open interest, it looks like somebody just sold them for a dime outright. That's the best guess I, best guess I have Nothing on that. bad could happen from that. I <laughs> know, uh, not at all, because we already got up there. Now, um, the most you could lose is about six bucks, right? Because that's as high as we've gotten. Huh. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's exactly how the math works. No, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that that one wasn't part of a spread. That's, that's really kind of the direction I was going with that. Mr. Rock Lobster, same question for you. Any interesting nuggets catching your eye out there in VIX options this week? Maybe these uh, June upside palooza catching your eye, sir? <laughs> um, I, it's the same thing. Like, why is the ball, ball so big in VIX? Um, like, um, like VIX relatively high. I mean, I know VIX is 30, so we keep th- 30 feels so normal now. I have to keep forgetting it's only it's only in zone four 25 percent of the time. So um, <laughs> as far as this goes, I am looking at if there some more there is a little bit more downside put purchasing going on. So I just wonder if that's, you know, which which. Which flavor will reign supreme to uh, uh, to take something from the Iron Chef a little bit, uh, paraphrase, but um, it's just – it's still looking at net like feel still buyers of VIX contracts sort of here, there, and everywhere. So people clearly are seeing something that I ain't. Yeah, including that guy who's playing out there in the 80s. I see a bunch of them going up lately for 100 lots for a nickel. <laughs> so maybe he sold them for a, nick, a dime and buying them back for a nickel. But uh, that's just uh, looks like some of that going up out there today even. So, yeah, little little lots going up <laughs> for a nickel out here. But, yeah, weird weird stuff out here on these June 80s. Traded 54000 like I mentioned earlier this week. Other than that, the big biggest day, well, we saw 20000 on the 22nd, 22, almost 23000 on the 23rd. And then other than that, the big days were back in April with about, oh, 35, about 36,000. So this has been a strike that has had some – it's been captive in the imagination out there for a little bit as well. Mr. Rhodes, you mentioned some put buyers out there in June come, come across your radar as well, sir? Uh, I think that was Andrew who just put that one in our private chat. But the, uh, the 25 put buyers in June – maybe expecting a little bit of downside. I, I don't know how – needless to say, with the way that um, everything's being supported, um, I, I just I, – I would be a put seller. <laughs> I'm, I've got a lot of conviction today, which means it's time for VIX to get to the teens. Rock lobster. <laughs> yes, exactly. When you're most convicted, that's when uh, we're heading down. You are the canary in the coal mine. Russell is in cash, so sell all the VIX you possibly can. <laughs> Rock lobster – Dr. Vicks, I get you, get you guys confused all the time. You can see how it's, it is so easy for me to do. Let's move on into another product that you guys love out there, perhaps love to hate, love to fade. This is, of course, our old friend VXX. It was a little bit shy of 35 handle coming into showtime, about 34.8. That puts it actually up from last week, up about a third of a point. Looks like it's given up most of that back now, down to about 34 and about a third, so giving up about half a point. From there, so it's actually down now on the week. Coming into showtime, we had seen about 94,000 contracts on the tape out there in VXX land. Let's see if it's put up a little more since then. Yeah, about 150,000 contracts on the tape, so a pretty active day out there. The ADV is about 226, so a bit shy of a quarter million. Let's see. Coming into showtime, the biggest prints out there were the May 34 is going up about 11,000 times right now. Looks like they have gone up a total of 16,000 times out there today and about 10,000 of the May 35. So maybe a bit of a funky roll up there or a funky vertical 
one by one and a half or so out there, but those are the big prints out there. Look at the top positions in VXX land. There was some interesting trading going on out here in VXX options land this week, listeners. Uh, the top positions, number 10, we got the June 25 calls. Only two calls in the top 10, so perhaps that'll tell you something out there. 41, almost 42,000 of the June 25s. Then number 9, we got about 48,000 of the June 30 puts. Number 8, 51,000 of the June 20 puts. Number 7, 52K of the June 25 puts. Number 6, 54,000 of the June 16 puts. Number 5, 55,000 of the June 23 puts. You get where I'm going here, listeners. Number 4, 56,000 of the June 18 puts. Number 3, our second and final call in the top 10 here, 63,000 of the June 31s. Then number 2, 96,000 of the AUG 30 puts. And number 1 with the bullet, a bucko 5 of the AUG 22 puts. Pay attention to those strikes, listeners, because we had some interesting trading going on out here this week. I was chatting with the meatball earlier this week. He got his... He got his reports in from Mr. Tubby, a.k.a. Mr. Benson, about some big VXX put prints going up over there on the Pecos, I believe. And last week, as you recall, listeners, the big number one position was the July 35 puts. We had over 100,000 open on that strike, and it seemed like we were just dancing, flirting with that strike. We'd get close to it and bounce away, get close to it and bounce away, and it seemed like the guy who was sitting on all that OI was just getting frustrated. Well, he finally had a chance to get out of it this week, looks like he came in and sold about 90,000 of those July 35 puts. And then he came around and put it back to work for about 95,000 of the AUG 30 puts against nine, excuse me, 105,000 of the AUG 22 puts. So he sold out of the July puts and he bought an AUG put spread for a similar size. According to the tub man there, he collected about 23 million doing that out there. That guy did all right on these puts, maybe not as good as you might think. You think, oh, 35 puts, he had those on, they're pretty good. He put them on, looks like, back on the 29th of April when VXX was about 36.71. Then by the time he took them off earlier this week on the 26th, the stock had dropped. It dropped almost three points, about 33.83. He made about only 40 cents on these bad boys because he had them on for about a month. So there was obviously some decay. And also when he put them on, things were a little juicy, as we kind of cautioned you out there. Things were kind of juicy for just straight up buying VXX puts. So he had a nice little move here to the downside in VXX, but it probably took a little longer than he hoped. And also, the juice uh, <laughs> came out a little bit to the point where he only made $0.40. Cents. It still worked all right. If he did about $90,000, uh, then he made about, oh, $3.6 million. Not bad. Not bad work. Uh, but listen, he's done better in the past. It looks like the same guy has been rolling for a little bit. By the way, he bought that AUG put spread, looks like, for about three fifty one out there. That's what he paid for the AUG puts, at least, the AUG put spread. But it looks like this guy's been rolling for a little bit. Uh, he rolled from the June 45 puts back when he put on those July 35 puts back on April 29th. Looks like uh, that one did a little bit better. <laughs> looks like about two, two and a half bucks almost on that last roll. So if he did that again 90,000 times, he's talking about $22 million bucks in his pocket on that one so this guy's done all right rolling his downside puts this last one still did all right man you got a lot of capital you're tying up to do this but still interesting one to watch so keep an eye on this aug 30 22 put spread out here listeners because this guy's got a decent track record and it may be something to pay attention to mr rock lobster i'm sure these prints went up and you guys discussed them in your pit chat slash legions that's whatever you call it so what are your thoughts here on our friend the ever rolling size put guy out here in VXX and any other prints that caught your eye, sir? Well, I mean, you know what? One thing when we highlight some of the bigger size and the vol products, they tend to do better. Like the big vol guys, you know, 50 Cent comes to mind. He had that small payday um, this year. Uh, this guy is still kind of on the right side. Um, but the high vol is, and that's one of the things that short term has kept me out of this. Uh, just because a lot of high ball in VXX and it's not really moving very much. It's so I think the idea of going out to August um, and being a little patient for the ball is, is a better strategy to be honest. Um, so, and the meatball thinks as well. So um, shorter term, I think is tougher. It doesn't mean it can't happen, but I think, uh, you know, longer term, it seems there seems to be some trends um, and we'll see if they keep going, but, it's hard to imagine, you know, VXX staying above 30 by August, um, especially if, you know, realized balls keeps going down like it's doing. So um, it would, I, I like, I like this as a trade. I didn't think this, and the guy's like, he's like, Hey man, I'm running out of time with these 35s and the juice is too expensive. So I need a little more bang for my buck. So 
uh, as a trade, I, I think it's a, I thought it was a, a good role. Yeah, clearly he's a little bit dissuaded by the premium because he actually is doing a put spread for the, the first time in a little while out here. But I've, I've kind of been surprised by this guy. I've been watching him for a little bit as well. And you're right, just naked buying all this premium to the downside, just apropos of nothing else. I mean, obviously, we don't know all of his positions, but on the option side, he didn't have any spreads until now. And he was doing it every month. He wasn't buying himself any more time because, as our listeners have pointed out, we point out on the show, things are pricey out there right now. You need a little bit, <laughs> you need to be very judicious and you usually have to have some short legs against it to make anything long premium in VXX really make any sense. And it looks like our friend discovered that. He still did all right out here, but not clearly not as well as his uh, previous role did. Mr. Rhodes, you watching our friend out here playing his size rolling game in VXX and anything else catching your eye out here this week, sir? No, not necessarily that, but the the thing that, and I I know I'm very early, but you never know when you're going to have me back um, on this one. But, you know, we've got that weird election bump with the October futures popping up relative to the September futures. And I, I, again, I know it's too early to put a trade on around this, but uh, if that's going to persist, uh, is that going to add to the roll yield over a certain period of time? And, and does that maybe put an extra headwind in for BXX that people might want to try and take advantage of? I can't imagine that it wouldn't. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see. Of course, you are, as always, a little early on that. We'll get to election time roll yield <laughs> in a little bit. But our friend here who is rolling out every month, he'll probably come in contact with that uh, pretty soon. It'll be interesting to see what he does out there. But in the meantime, though, we got to keep an eye on that 3022 put spread. What are you up to out in VXX? You guys have already been sending us some of your ideas. But if you have ways you're making that lower but still very high bit of juice out there in VXX, all that's working for you, ways you're doing that, hit us up. Let us know. We'd like to hear from you guys looking on the earnings vol front out here again you guys can get these reports for yourselves completely for free that's how nice we are and of course the folks at orat's pretty nice as well because they're putting out all the reports for you they're crunching the numbers out there so check them out over there the options insider.com you got the whole earnings season pretty much broken down for you over there right now but there were some names popping off this week we had AutoZone tuesday hp and box on wednesday by the way of course for our international listeners the reason why i wasn't breaking down any volume for vxx or vix or anything else on monday of course we were closed here in the u.s for the memorial day holiday uh, thursday we had the big dollar day dollar general dollar tree td costco salesforce and ulta beauty and big lots on friday we got all these reports let's break down a few of them this actually is a results report here for Dollar Tree, ticker symbol DLTR, of course. They went into their announcement priced about seventy eight fifty nine. They were pricing in 7.6% from an overall earnings vol perspective. They delivered about 26%, so outperforming pretty dramatically out there on Dollar Tree. Uh, TD outperforming as well, not quite as dramatically. Uh, they were went into their announcement about forty one fifty seven. They were pricing in 3.2%, so pretty tepid overall. Vol prognostication. They delivered about 6.5%, though. So TD delivering a little bit of bang for the buck out there as well. Costco was, we have an earnings preview for this one. That their results report should be up in a little bit. They were on the 28th after the bell. They were at 302.76. So things pretty pricey out there in Costco land. They were pricing in $8.17 in the past. They've actually moved $9.27. So actually a little light, which is, again, a theme. We've been commenting on here for a while now that, in general, names seem to be underpricing vol this cycle, which is a little surprising. You can see here for yourselves over there, theoptionsinsider.com, how that's worked out with the earnings season report. But spoiler alert, it's been kind of a weird mixed bag. The first three weeks of the season, we saw the names, even though vol was low, names actually underperforming that vol, which... I guess means that low vol was merited. Uh, we had 86% week one, 58%. Get that, week two underperformance listeners, and 82% week three. Week four is another weird one because it was exactly 100%. So the names came in pretty much exactly in line. And week four is a pretty busy week. There's a lot of big names popping off week four. Came in exactly in line. That's kind of weird. Uh, week five, we had 121%, so outperformance that week. And then week six, down to about 60%. So far, at least at the time of this report. So dramatic underperformance there. So I guess maybe this light vol kind of merited, except for the actual busy weeks where there was a little bit of outperformance. Check it out for yourself. Crunch all those numbers for yourselves. Theoptionsinsider.com. All right. Now it's time to get to you guys a little bit of your volatility voicemail. 
It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL. Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options or facebook.com slash the options insider all right everybody welcome to the vol voicemail we featured a lot of you on the 400th episode spectacular last week but your questions keep coming in hot and heavy right now <laughs> someone chiming in during the show just trading he's commenting on your comment there Russell, about July in the VIX futures term structure seemed to be oddly popping up. You're not sure why that was, and he, he just comments GE. So he thinks GE alone is responsible for that weird blip in the July VIX futures term structure. What do you say to that once in future, Dr. VIX? you think GE alone could cause that blip? I'd say Jake is a smart guy, and I'm not going to fade him on that. Well, there you go. I don't know Jake. I'll take your word for it out there. GE, that would be impressive. If G he had such potential out there. Let's see. Uh, next up, Justin. Justin Galen. Oh, this is kind of what we're just talking about, Mr. Rock Lobster. He says, am I crazy? Or are these VXX puts just super expensive? I get the math, and I know that they will eventually work out over time. But I'm not sure if the juice is worth the squeeze. Spending $3 to $5 for a put to make about $0.30 cents over 6 to 12 months. <laughs> It doesn't seem like the best use of capital. I think maybe the market has caught up to this game and it's not quite as lucrative as it used to be. Yeah, Justin, this is something we've been remarking on for some time out there. You know, the the reflex for a lot of you out there is, oh, i got to fade this pop and vol. We certainly saw that over the last couple of months. Was well, a great vehicle, vehicle to do this. Of course, VXX, a lot of things were conspiring against you out there of late. Of course, you had VXX was super expensive from an overall vol perspective. So that alone was prohibitive for most people as you point out also of course until recently vix was backwards so that didn't help <laughs> heck of a lot either you didn't get the juicy erosion you normally get out there so a lot of things were working against you out there obviously that ball has come in but we just we just broke down an example that guy didn't do as well as you might have assumed in other normal circumstances a typical summer roll of a vxx puts probably would have done a little bit better than our friend out there did. Mr. Rock Lobster, we were just talking about this. Do you agree with Mr. Galen that uh, things out there are just super expensive in VXX land right now and maybe that game not quite as lucrative as it used to be? I think it's definitely, you know, I, I, like I said, two or 30 VIX. Like, ball, ball is very high. At any other time that I can, you know, in the last few years, if I say VIX is 30, you're like, no way, that's crazy high, right? And it, now it's just sort of everybody's punch drunk. And, you know, the vol products are going to reflect the fact that the vol so high. So, you know, and one thing if you're trading vol, and I know this is going to be um, you're like, geez, Andrew, this is a really interesting observation you're making. But, you know, in Vixen's 12, it has nowhere to go on the downside, really. I mean, every, every point of vol is like pulling teeth, right? So most of the directional move is just, you know, it's pushed in one direction up, right? That's kind of where the, if it, there's going to be a move, that's where generally it'll be. On the, on, on the, when VIX is 30, though, all of a sudden, wow, that move to 15, that could happen. It's not like it's going to happen tomorrow, but, you know, to all of a sudden the breadth of move now you can get from where we are is pretty darn big. And the vol, the, the premium is going to reflect that in the products. So everybody has gotten spoiled in the past because we're generally fat contango, high futures, low VIX cash. And those those relative percentages were very big for the future premium. Now those percentages actually are kind of small. Um, and it's just harder to make that thing move until VIX cash starts moving. So um, until VIX cash starts moving, um, I think you're going to see that. The risk reward is just not going to look as good. So I agree with them 100%. It's I'm looking at the same thing, kind of scratching my head. And, you know, that's – I don't usually like saying this for VXX, but like a put spread could be the thing and save you some money. Yeah, our friend out there doing size, and he's doing size for a put spread for the first time in a while. That's not an indication that things are kind of pricey out there. You need to you need to offset some of that premium. I don't know what is. Mr. Mr. Once in Future, Dr. Vic, sir, what are your thoughts here on uh, – Justin's comments that VXX is too darn expensive these days, sir. 
No, it's not. It's a regime change. That's how, we haven't we haven't used the word volatility regime today. Uh, we are switching from a low volatility regime to a high volatility regime. So what is considered high and low has changed, and it will change again. And eventually, you know, I'll, I'll be guessing fourteen, and I'll be the upside guess for the uh, crystal ball. Uh oh, regime change, <laughs> Mr. Rhodes. Uh, but you know, <laughs> looks like we got your uh, your buddy here, Mr. Andrew. Uh, Mr. Hawkeye lurking in chat. Actually, uh, Hawkeye 618, to be precise, saying Trump is not a single-digit VIX president anymore. Yeah, that's uh, he's obviously been listening for a while. That goes back to the, the early days when uh, this administration was brand new and or even not even in office yet. And the one thing everyone on the planet prognosticated pretty heavily was that Trump would not be a single-digit VIX president. And lo and behold, we got 2017, which was the lowest volatility has been in recent memory. So, yeah, he's not exactly that anymore. You're right, Mr. Hawkeye. He seems to be single-handedly almost conspiring to uh, keep this vol at least elevated right now and spook this bull, which is funny because everything else they're doing out there is really meant to keep the bull going, get the market going again, and yet he kind of steps on the brakes himself (laughs) there on Thursday, and now everyone's still kind of waiting out there as well. So, yeah, weird, weird days we're living in. May you live in interesting times out there. Tyler. Send in some love uh, out here to us. Uh, he, Tyler says, congratulations on Ball Views 400. A fantastic milestone for a great show. You are truly some of the good guys in this market. Well, thank you very much, Tyler. There are a lot of bad guys out there floating around. Glad to see we are the white hat ones, at least for you out there. And glad to everyone out there else who participated and joined and enjoyed Ball Views 400. You guys are, at the end of the day, the reason that we're able to do 400 shows nearly a decade of this freaking show. Think about it from that perspective. Think about what the podcast environment, let alone the volatility environment, was nearly a decade ago. And that's when this show was launched, let alone this network, which goes back way farther than that. So it's kind of crazy when you put it in those, in those terms uh, exactly how long we've been talking vol out here. But thanks for that, Tyler, and everyone else who enjoyed it. We enjoy you guys listening and sending those questions in. Now, here's an interesting one for you, Mr. Rose, since you're on the show. Let's Bump this one up because this is kind of in your old your old wheelhouse, maybe still, and kind of also interesting too, given what's going on in the commodity markets of late. Uh, T Lance wanted to know what's up with OIV and OBX uh, now that crude is in the toilet. I think this came in a few weeks back when we saw crude quite literally in the toilet, <laughs> down to negative forty in that front month WTI contract. Of course, when that started hitting the negative strikes, that really threw things like OIV completely out of whack because they really were never designed for negative strikes in that calculation. So that kind of made them a little bit useless. Now things calm down a little bit. We don't have a negative number out there in WTI right now. So Mr. Rhodes, uh, what are your thoughts as Mr. T. Lance wants to know, what's up with OIV and OVX right now? Oh, well, let's, have a, let's, let's add in a corollary before you do that. We have a related question here from uh, Elite or E-L-3-T-E. Let's call him Elite because it sounds cooler. He wants to know, why no puts or calls on OVX? So Mr. Uh, Rhodes as the only former SIBO representative here, you get to answer both of those. Uh, well, first off, uh, the the I'm not seeing an OIV quote. I'm seeing an OVX quote, uh, but I, I went to uh, where I used to always check in on OIV, and they have it closed as of May 15th. <laughs> Uh-oh, so did neg- sh- negative crude broke it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, negative, and it, it the last figure was uh, two forty four forty three. <laughs> so, uh, but OVX is is probably uh, worth looking at once again. Especially, yeah, it 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 became a kind of difficult to get a read with when uh, the USO was down around seven or eight, and there really weren't that many option strikes uh, feeding into the calculation. But now we've got it up around you know, 70 or so, which might be kind of accurate uh, with respect to what's going to happen over the summer um, with the price of oil. It could go in either direction. Uh, I have a funny feeling it probably could go down based on the fundamental supply demand um, aspects of it. But uh, politically or geopolitically, if we start getting into it, it could really start going to the other side. So, I, I would not fade high volatility in oil right now uh, at all because I don't think we're completely done 
uh, with the goofiness. I don't think that I'm not saying that it's going to go negative again, but I don't think that we are done with it being the load, you know, the leading story on the business networks in the morning sometime, either due to a big move to the upside or maybe another big move to the downside. And then the question was, why can't we trade options on OVX? Well, we you could try. I remember we could trade the futures. I did trade the futures uh, a couple of times. Uh, there, there were futures, and I can't remember if we had options or not on OVX. But the reason that you can't is because nobody, nobody traded those things when they were out there. And unfortunately, when it came around to the time that you wanted them, like you know, oil going negative or gold making like a you know seven or eight standard deviation move or or rallying like it has now, um, the products weren't around anymore. So unfortunately, that's that's why you can't trade it. Yep, you guys are the reasons you got rid of OIV. It's all your fault. You guys drove WTI negative and you broke OIV. Now that's why we can't have nice things. <laughs> but you're right. It does it's not disseminating any more values after May 15th, closing at 244. They closed the damn thing because of the negative strikes. It broke it. Broke everything. It broke their brains. They couldn't price it any longer. They should probably bring this back now. I would think. I think. I think saner heads have prevailed. We're certainly not not negative in the front month anymore in WTI. So I don't know why you can't disseminate an OIV anymore. I'm, I want to get to the bottom of that. That sounds kind of interesting, Mister uh, Mister Rock Lobster. Anything coming across your pit chat these days? What are your thoughts on what T Lance and Elite have to say about uh, OIV and OVX, sir? Um. I- I thought oil would have been an interesting ballpark to trade. Obviously, it's only going to trade like once in a blue moon when there's oil problems. Um, but you needed a future. You know, I think if one one thing anybody's learned about trading these products is it's hard to trade an option without an underlying. It's hard for the public to get their hand around it, for institutions, everybody else. So I think you need to develop some, um, you know, to, you need to, the future has to develop for the options to trade. That's just been my observation over the years. Maybe Russell obviously has more info on that, but I think that's what you need. And I think that's why the oil product probably never took off because the, there wasn't that underlying and we, we couldn't get any um, uh, harder to get buy-in without the underlying. So I, I think it's an interesting product. Uh, but for me at the time, it was, it was very difficult to trade. It was like trade by appointment and all that kind of stuff. So um Anyway, that's that's my two cents on that. So it's it might be worth less than that two cents, to be honest. <laughs> well, at least if it's if it's worth as much as those options and futures were, which not very much, I should say. Uh, yeah, you know, that's one of these things that these products that seem like a slam dunk. You know, you have the GVZ, which was the gold VIX. You know, you had the oil VIX. These things seem like home runs, and yet they joined the vol product dustbin of history, along with many others out there. I remember arguing. Very vociferously with a guest on this network. Might have been you, Rock Lobster. I forgot who it was exactly years ago that there was a GVZ and that there were futures. They did actually trade for a brief period of time. So they did exist. You could have traded a gold VIX if you were so inclined. No longer, unfortunately, for T Lance and Elite and everyone else out there. But what you can do is snicker at us here in the crystal ball as we attempt to wrestle with what the Vol gods have in store for us yet again. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right. This is this is this is one's not going to put a smile on my face. I just know it because somewhere right now the greasiest of meatballs is smiling, which makes me sad. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome to the Crystal Ball. This is the portion of the show where we prognosticate or attempt to what the Vol gods have in store. I was, I was feeling, I think, the right direction. We just haven't gotten a little bit of a lift. Mr. Trump needs to get out there and twist that knife a little bit again and get my, get my prediction up to it. Because, of course, we were predicting where we're going to be right now, listeners, from a Vol overall VIX cash and Spikes perspective. Coming into the end of the show here, we got Spikes at a 29.20. And we got VIX Cash at right a little bit shy of that, about 28, uh, 70 odd right now. So we got a little bit of a mixed dance. Mr. Meatball was actually pretty darn close. He was within 0.1. That's almost pretty much technically a bullseye. He was at 29, 29, at least on spikes. He was about less than a 0.1 away. We had Tom on the downside at 27.84. He's almost he's within a point on VIX Cash. He's a little more. He's about a point and change on 
the old spikes. So, but we'll give him a, a second place for him. I was feeling a little bit more vol than the other two. I was at 32, 35. I was playing the Russell Rhodes role. Not a ton of vol. I was just feeling a little bit more vol. And yet, uh, we never got that much north of the 30 handle this week. So, my 32, 35, not going to cut it this week. That means, you know what, Mr. Rock Lobster, I'll allow you to share in the, in the glorious bullseye of your compatriot there, the greasy meatball. Wherever he is right now, his ears are burning and he is smiling because he, he has finally secured a bullseye here in the crystal ball. But uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, what are you feeling for this time next week, sir? As, as surprising it is that the greasy meatball did hit a bullseye with a crystal ball, I'm even more surprised you gave him credit for it in, in, the, in the biggest benign dictatorship <laughs> on, on multimedia. It is very I, uncharacteristic actually, of me. Yes, it is. You're, you're, you, the, mag, the magnanimous, the, the generosity flowing from your heart, I'm, I'm felled right now. I can barely stand up. I'm so shocked. Um, me, I'm going with realized ball is lower, and I'm just going with the numbers. I think Vic's the end of the week is 25. 25 even. Interesting. So Mr. Rock Lobster feeling a wee bit of downside out there right now. Since I was nowhere close, I shall go last. So Mr. Rhodes, you get the vaunted second place, sir. What are you feeling for this time next week? Oh, I was just going to go with 30. Oh, 30 even. So playing your yeah, game again. Yeah, just 30. I mean, uh, you know, that's that's where we're at. <laughs> it's just where, I mean, that's yeah, that's just real easy. It, it was unchanged week over week. Why shouldn't it happen again? You're right. I mean, you look at the rubber banding of uh, what's been going on out there. It is kind of hard to argue <laughs> against just going right back to the 30 strike and hanging out there. So we got 25 on the downside, Mr. Rhodes. Feeling his oats once again to the upside here, re- revisiting his old uh, SIBO hot seat days. But he did not but buy VIX week in, week out here on the show. You know, I was 32 35 last week. I don't know if I'm quite, of course, we don't know over this weekend, of course, we have yet to even hear the announcement of what's going to happen. So we could be at that level and higher in a few minutes. So, you know what? I am going to take my level and I am going to dial it back a little bit. I'm going to say 31.35 for this time next week. So that's me on the upside, 31.35. We got uh, Mr. Rock Lobster on the dark side at a 25. And Mr. Rhodes, kind of hard to argue, saying stuck I glue to uh, the 30 strike yet again next week. All right. Unfortunately, that music means we've come to the end of this epic volatility journey, listeners. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying everything that's been hitting the network for you all week. We had Twifo. We had OB yesterday. You guys got OPR yesterday as well. You got a dose of the advisor's option this week. You got boot camp hitting your face this week. I mean, it's just tons you had. Nothing on Monday, of course, but we made up for it every other day this week. So slew of content hitting you if you haven't done so already. Make sure you subscribe to the full network so you can get that whole fire hose, that juggernaut coming at you of uh, options content out there. We will keep you informed, if nothing else out there, engaged a wee bit as well out there. Check it out at theoptionsider.com, the place to go for all the shows and everything else that we do. Let's go around the horn now. Mr. Rock Lobster, I want to join this poorly named trading legion, what the cool kids call the pit chat. Uh, Where should I go? What should I do? Um, you can go to optionpit.com. We have three excellent products for the beginner, Sharp Bets, Ball Edge, and the Trading Legion, where we add mentoring to the education. Learn how to learn how to use Ball to help you make better option trades. And I'm pretty sure that there's a VIX professor that might know something about this Ball thing coming up to talk in a second. Yeah, you're right. Looking at it now, it looks like maybe the concerns are easing a little bit. We got uh, VIX was dropping, as you just mentioned. Uh, we got S&P up now a quarter of a percent. Dow unched or up slightly. And NASDAQ closing in on a full percentage point to the upside. So uh, maybe uh, something has uh, leaked out that uh, it's not going to be as strident of a press conference as uh, as they're thinking. By the way, maybe the warm is turning. I could be wrong instantaneously. We shall see. Oh, I could be deeply correct. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, same question for you, sir. If folks want to check out what you're working on, where should they go? What should they do? 
Well, first off, I think that market rally ha- is all about me. I said I went to cash, and boom, there goes the market. There you go. Um, so now I'm working on uh, outreach to volatility traders all over the world. Andrew will be hearing from me shortly, uh, and I'll be back with the results on that in a couple of months. And other than that, uh, Vic's book is just about done be out in the fall and as i said dissertation's just about done and i will make you call me doctor there you go the once and future dr vick someday in the indeterminate future he may actually be dr fix out there check him out over there he's on the nasdaq site you can check him out eq derivatives a bunch of other cool places just give him a follow on the old twitter search for russell Rhodes. r-h-o-a-d-s can't spell it the easy way what fun would that be, listeners? And, of course, check out our friends over there in Myax land, myaxoptions.com slash spikes, S-P-I-K-E-S, for all that data, the charts, the analytics, a snazzy, cool video showing you exactly what the heck spikes is, all settlement prices, all the other stuff you could possibly want about spikes here in one place. You want notice, notice about when the futures are coming back? Check it out there for yourselves, myaxoptions.com slash spikes is the place to go. And on behalf of our friends over there in my ex land and Mr. Rhodes and, of course, the Rock Lobster entity myself, I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, subscribing, for sending in such great questions and comments. Keep them coming. We agree. VXX, pretty pricey. <laughs> and we'll see you back here next time for more Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest options platforms in the world. MyAx is now trading options on the Spikes Volatility Index, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction for confident trading, all for competitive exchange fees. It's time to make a change and give yourself an edge with Spikes. Learn more about Spikes at www.myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for information purposes only and are not intended to provide and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.